Hey, how are you? Hi, good morning, Mr. Patel. Mr. Patel. Good morning to you too. How's it, How's it going? Good. How's everything going with you? Good, good. Um, well, I'm so glad that you were able to uh, set some time for this um, this newbie that's trying to get you on the phone. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Awesome. So um, I kind of have all the questions already, um, and I'm I'm already recording this just so you know. Do you, would you like to do a video call or just an audio call? Uh, I don't have video right now, but if you want to do video, we can. We just have to reschedule. Oh, okay. Um, no, that's cool. I'll, um, we can do audio. Yes. Then, okay. that will work. Um, because I know you're a busy guy. Okay, so um, Neil Patel has has worked with with Google. He's worked with Microsoft. He's worked with Gawker Media. He's worked with. TechCrunch um, and all these other great companies, and he's really helped them increase uh, their search traffic, among other things, conversions, which is the main thing um, for all of us marketers. So um, that's why I'm interviewing him today, uh, so he can share some of that with us. Um, so the first thing, can you please tell us about your educational background? Yeah, so I got a degree in marketing from uh, a local college called California State University, uh, Fullerton. Uh, that was within Orange County or Southern California. I didn't really learn much in college, but I took a marketing class and you know took quite a few of them. Just went from there, but like I mentioned, never really was a fan of school. I'm not saying it's bad or good. I just wasn't a fan. And I didn't learn much. Right, right. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so how did the idea to enter into internet marketing uh, come into your mind? And what, um, what were the big problems that you faced when you started? Yeah, so when I first started internet marketing, what made me get into the space was I created a website and I didn't know how to get traffic. So I had to end up just figuring out how to learn how to market myself because I didn't really have much money. That's how I got started in the whole space. Right. That And and I could relate to that, actually. That's kind of where I'm at now, too. <laughs> so um, you've become an SEO master, among other things. So that's how you started, basically trying to do free traffic methods, right? Yeah, that's really was it. It's just, I was trying to grow my own traffic. Wow, okay, awesome. So... Um, are you into the product launch niche? If you're not, um, do you plan on getting, getting into that niche? And what do you recommend for someone who's trying to get into the product launch niche? I'm not into the product launch niche. I don't know. I know like people in it, but I'm not the foremost expert or anything like that on it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cause I saw you had the, the advanced webinar. That was awesome. I saw that whole webinar. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, it's like for me, it's products are great, but I believe in evergreen. I know a lot of people make money just launching products. It's just not my thing. Got it. Okay, cool, cool. I don't really care for it too much. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right. So, um, and then internet marketing is all about finding the people who have the right mindset, right? And are just as passionate as you are. Um, what are the basic criteria we must keep in mind before inviting someone to become our partner? Yeah, so the way I see business partners is like a marriage. You better know who you're getting in bed with and you better be very comfortable with them and know them extremely well and make sure that they have skill sets that you don't have before you actually become business partners. Because unlike a marriage, right, business partnerships are really hard to break up from. It's not as simple as just divorce and splitting assets. When you have a company that's doing really well, you can't just you know, have a divorce and then split resources. It doesn't work like that. Right. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it, actually. And it's very much like that. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's more so you really know, you really have to know what's going to end up working or you really have to know the other person 
And if you make a mistake, it's a really messy exit. Usually when you get a divorce in business, it's one person leaving the other. Right. Okay, cool. All right. So, yeah, so that's great advice for someone trying to find a partner. Um, so I see that you're really active um, with content marketing and you said you do a lot of evergreen. Um, could you explain a little bit of that and what is the biggest motivational force helping you to do these activities? Yeah, so for me, it's just fun. Like when I do everything that I do online, it's not because it's money or it's not because like I want to be cool or any of that. Like I just enjoy it. I think if you're passionate about something, you're much more likely to do a lot of work within the space, help others out, keep pushing forward, never giving up, right? It's all about just doing what you love. Yeah, that's, and uh, we tend to hear that a lot, especially when starting out, you know, they, a lot of people say, you know, follow your passion, follow your passion, and, and it's something that you just do on a daily basis, right? You just enjoy doing it. Exactly. You got it right. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, and so I've seen a lot of people that get stuck with only blogging, right? What suggestion do you have uh, for any newbies who are, still, who are still trying to find the right path in the industry? Yeah. If you're still trying to find the right path in the industry, you need to first figure out what you love and what you don't love. If you start focusing on stuff that you may not like and then you start blogging and it doesn't work out, you'll notice that you've just wasted a ton of time. Yeah. So I always recommend make sure you know what you're getting into before you really do. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's good advice actually. Um, you know, because blogging especially takes a very long time to see results too. Um, long time, right? <laughs> it's like a blog won't give you the results you're looking for in a year. Yeah, Sometimes it yeah. takes two to three years. I know that's a really long period of time, but that's the reality of the situation. Yeah, that's so true. And even when you have the tips and, and the secrets too, even then it can take some time. That's correct. Awesome. Okay, so like I said uh, before, I really enjoyed uh, the advanced webinar. What are some tips you have for those who are thinking of doing the first webinar? Tips I have for people doing, like, what do you mean? They're creating their own first webinar? Yeah, yes. Well, when you're creating a webinar, you need to make sure you're not just educating, but you have an end goal, too. See, what's the point of doing a webinar if you don't know what you want from it? Like, you got to really figure out, like, okay, I'm going to do a webinar, and here's what's going to happen. You know, I'm going to pitch people on a product, or I'm going to try to collect leads, or I'm just trying to educate to build my brand so then that way later on I can grow my brand, maybe get paid speaking fees or get more return visitors. Or uh, I'm going to do a webinar to help keep customers paying longer, right, only for paid members. When you're doing a webinar, make sure you have an end goal because that end goal affects how you do your webinar. Right, yes, of course. So um, There's sort of a balance that's needed uh, between selling and also uh, teaching at the same time, right? This is, this is something that we sort of learn. What are, what are some tips that you recommend uh, like for someone who's trying to provide value but at the same time they're not trying to stop selling? They're, they're not trying to stop what? Selling? Selling, yes. So like they're trying to provide value and sell? Yeah, at the same time sort of or, you know. Well, there's a few things. One, don't sell until you provide the value. Two, the sale has to be related to the webinar and the education you're providing. Three, don't sell too hard. Uh, make sure you give, 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 right? So typically if you give three times and then you ask, you're better off than if you uh, give and ask and give and ask. Then it's too much like you're just trying to make the sale. Right. Yeah, that's well, true. Really focus on the value because if people love the resource, the webinar pretty much that you're giving, and they really feel the value in it, they're much more likely to actually make a purchase. That is true. That is very true, actually. Because I've, I've read around the internet, um, some people say that you you can sell 80% of the time and only provide 20% value. But that's not what you're saying at all. You know, that's the complete opposite, probably, right? Yeah, exactly, right? You just want to keep providing value and then eventually you want to sell, usually sell towards the end. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I noticed. You guys did a really good job with that, with the slides and everything. Um, 
Okay, so the online industry is in a boom now where like five, six years ago, if you were to say, I want to become an entrepreneur, you were sort of looked at, you know, as the slacker, so to speak. Um, but now, you know, it's something that's, that's revered. And so how do you think this profession is going to survive in the future? And what are your plans five years down the line? Well, the way I look at the profession is there's always going to be entrepreneurs or people who are trying to get rich or trying to solve problems or create the next company. Whatever their reasons are, you're always going to see entrepreneurs. It'll always be around. The way you survive is you focus on solving a problem. Your solution needs to be good and ideally it needs to be affordable enough for the people within that market. Right. Yes, of course. And I've, I've heard that a lot, actually, trying to find... Um, the solution you have to do your market research i was going to ask you about seo which is one of your specialties um right and um it's a very frightening word for those who are just starting out but um, how do you approach seo and what tips do you have for someone who's never even heard of seo yeah the way i think about seo is google and other search engines want to rank what's best for their user first so if you can focus on purely giving value to the user from like a web page perspective, even if you don't rank well in the short run, in the long run, you should do better. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, so because um, a lot of the, the tips that you give, um, you know, content marketing and providing just epic value in general, which is sort of what you do um, with neopatel.com, you have a lot of long-form content, I've realized. Um, what do you recommend uh, for someone, you know, should they start with long form content or should they experiment to see what works with their market or something like that? Yeah, like typically long form ranks better. Um, it's your call if you want to do long form or short form. But usually what we've seen the data shows that Google tends to rank web pages on page one that have at least 2,000, 2,300 words or so. Right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So that has gone up because before, I think last year it was like about probably like 1,000 to 1,500, right? Yeah, that's correct. And it's going up. So it's only going to keep going up? What do you think about that? I don't know if it's going to keep going up, but it's quite a bit of words. So Yeah. <laughs> It really comes down to value. I can add 2,500 words and someone else can create a 500 word blog post and if their blog post is better, they should end up getting higher rankings in the long run. You also have to keep in mind quality has to be there too. 5,000 word posts that are really high in quality are great. So it's like you got to have good length but you want to make sure the quality is there as well. Right. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good answer for that. Um, so you're the, you're the founder of Kissmetrics and um, Quicksprout, right? Among some other ones I think I'm missing right now. Uh, yeah, crazy I, I focus my time on Crazy Egg and Hello Bar these days. Okay. All right. And um, how, did, how did you come up with Hello Bar? Just sort of for a newbie, how would you explain something like that? How would that idea come into your mind? The for Hello Bar? Yes. Well, Hello Bar we ended up buying from another company. Someone else already had Hello Bar. Oh, okay, cool. And and they didn't want to focus on it much, so we thought it was a good fit for Crazy Egg, so we just bought the company. Wow, look at that. And you did really great with Hello Bar after that, right? Yeah, it's doing well. Could always be doing better, but it's going pretty well. Got it, got it, got it, cool. Yeah, it's something so simple, you know, just at the top like that of every web page that you visit. Yeah, it's a simple product that works well. Of course, we need to keep adapting and modifying it, but yeah. Okay, cool, cool. My my main question for you really is um how does how, how does someone like you find um you know, not only the time but all of the energy to produce um waves of content on your own? <laughs> You produce a lot of long form content and you know across multiple sites and it's almost you know like two to three times a week. Well I blog a lot, right? 
so that's my advantage. I spend more time blogging than most people. I don't spend most of my time in meetings or anything like that. I like I literally am blogging at least I don't know a few hours a day minimum. Minimum, yeah. So you spend I, right. so it's not too hard. But yeah, right. So you spend most of the time on your computer writing, writing blog posts. Yeah, I spend a lot of time doing that. Cool. That's awesome. And do you have like, um, let's say, like a specific workflow that that you follow, or do you just sort of, like, you know, start with a blank page? How how do you approach that? Yeah, I come up with the headline first. Once I come up with the headline, then I focus on uh, outlining the post. Then I'll end up uh, writing the introduction and the conclusion, and then I end up finishing up the post with just you know the gaps, like writing the majority of the post to me. Right. Yeah. And I see that you use a lot of images too in your post, and when they're longer too, you have to use more images. I see. You, do you know um, you know Brian Dean right from Backlinko? Yeah, I know him well. Yeah, awesome, awesome. He does that too. He does a lot of long form content with a lot of images. And yeah, it works really well. Most yeah. people don't do it because they're lazy, but it works extremely well. Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's like a how to article, but it's kind of like it's like a video, but you took screenshots of it and then you sort of broke it down. For the viewer, yeah, yeah, because not everyone can sit at home and watch videos all day. Even if they pay for them, sometimes they don't even watch them, right? So, so it's good to have uh, that. Yeah, a lot of people don't like watch videos or any of that. But if you can have long form content that's high in quality, eventually you should be able to get tons of people to read and watch and stay there and keep staying on your page and have good user metrics and those your rankings going up as well. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. All right. Um, you've answered a lot of the questions that I had and, and you did it pretty well. <laughs> um, I guess if you want to just share anything else for, for, my, for my readers, for my viewers, um, you know, as far as you go, um, on your side, any, anything that you want to share? Just keep at it, right? Like marketing in general, it's not an easy thing. You can all do well. It takes time though. Whether it's content marketing, SEO, like nothing's a quick hit. And if you focus your time and energy on it, you do it for six months, a year, two years. Because most people will end up giving up by then, right? But if you really put the time and energy into it, you try to put the best information out for users, you should start seeing really good results. It just, again, takes time. You have to be patient. Right, yeah. Okay, cool, man. That was, that was really awesome. Um, short and to the point with your answers the way I like them, too. <laughs> just look through one more time, make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, yeah, I think that's everything, yeah. It's like, Sounds good. If you need anything else from me, let me know. Awesome. Cool, man. I appreciate your time today. And, you know, I know you're going to get to your blogging more than likely right now, <laughs> right? If you need anything else, let me know. Okay, thank you, boss. I appreciate it. Have a, have a good day. Bye. Okay, bye. Hey guys, this is Onel Free, and um, I'm recording this um, as a recap for the Neil Patel interview, and I hope you guys really enjoyed that. It was really awesome experience for me to interview him. You know, somebody who's who's been so successful in the internet marketing uh, field, and um, who owns so many great. Uh, blogs and companies that are also extremely successful. It was just a really great privilege to do that. Um, so there you have it. Um, I shared the entire interview with you. Um, so I hope you can get some real value from that. And once you've, um, once you've already uh, finished my book too as well, I, 
I would appreciate any um, comments you guys have. You can reach me on Facebook or you can reach me on Skype, however you, however you prefer. Um, or you can just come to my blog um, and you can just leave some comments. So the main thing I got from Neil was um, that you really have to, you really have to engage your audience. Um, you know, it's not necessarily that everyone should be doing long form content, but you should at least have some of it in your content. Because your audience may not be so engaged. For example, if you have a younger audience especially, they're not going to sit down and read a 5,000 word blog post. So you really have to um, sit down and analyze uh, who's your target market and see how is it that you can provide value to them. Um, um, it's not just writing for the search engine. It's, it's writing for the people because the search engines are getting really smart, really intelligent, and they're only serving up content for the people. So that's what we have to do. Um, okay, so um, um, I hope you enjoyed this interview and the other two, um, if you haven't seen them yet, um, you should be seeing them soon, whether or not I send it to you in the next email or um, this video will be posted um, after the initial launch of the book, okay? Alright guys, so thanks for watching. This is Onarfri from Onarfri.com.